A lot of synesthetes do have multiple types of synesthesia, um, but, but often there, there can be a family resemblance between the types of synesthesia. So for example, if you have colours for uh, letters and numbers, you might also have colours for taste or colours for music and so on. So it's almost like there is a colour type of uh, synesthesia. And also, if you have colours for letters and numbers, you're more likely to experience um, spatial uh, concepts spatially, so experiencing months as a, a visuospatial sequence outside of your body, for example. These tend to go together. Uh, but there, there are so many different types of synesthesia that we don't really have a reliable way of grouping them together and saying that this is a reliable family difference here. And by family, I mean a family of types of synesthesia rather than a family of synesthetes. Um, but, but yes, there are multiple types of synesthesia that tend to go together. We don't know quite how to account for the variability of the, um, the number of types of synesthesia and the way that they co-occur in terms of uh, neurological differences or causal differences, uh, for example. But one suggestion is, is that the, uh, the, the genes that give rise to, uh, to synesthesia might be expressed in different parts of the brain in different people. So this might explain why if you have colours uh, for letters and numbers, you're more likely to have colours for music rather than taste for music, uh, for example. So it could be to do with differential expression of genes within certain pathways or within certain regions of the brain rather than it being completely diffuse. But this is speculative at the moment, but this is certainly uh, some consensus within the, the literature that this is what we might find eventually.